Good morning and welcome to Sitkama Kerk. Thank you for joining us this morning. I really do hope this Easter time was a blessed time for you and your family and that you experienced the Lord's presence like never before. We are looking at reading a few um, stories, um, resurrection stories about what happened to different disciples. Um, we looked at Mary last Sunday and we're going to look at the story of Thomas and the disciples this coming uh, this Sunday. But before we start this morning, um, let's just um, settle down. Um, we're going to do something a bit different this morning. Um, we're going to listen to a worship song. You can sing along or you can just um, listen to the words. Um, but let's bow our heads in prayer and follow the following song. Jesus, that we know that you are alive, that you have risen. Thank you that we serve a God that's not dead. God whose life and whose purpose didn't end the day that he died, but that he rose up and that he is alive and that he is with us. Thank you that you are here, that you are involved in our life and in our world. Thank you that, that we may come this morning and that we may come and pray and give ourselves to you anew this morning. Thank you for the seasons that are changing, for cold days, for hotter days. Thank you for, for cloudy days, for sunny days. Thank you that we can see how nature reacts to, 
to this changing of seasons. And that we may have that same expectation that in our lives we will see the results of you that are bringing new life. That you are working afresh in each one of us. Bless the sermon this morning. Bless what we are going to share. And thank you that we can connect in this way. Pray this in your holy name. Amen. I have made a few sermons about Thomas already, but it's always an interesting story for me because in my life I sometimes doubt. And I know each one of you must have come to a place in your life where you thought, but what do I believe and can I believe it? Well, sometimes it's just difficult to understand what the Lord is busy doing. Sometimes it's difficult to understand um, when and how is he going to listen to our prayer and answer our prayers. We must remember Thomas missed out on an experience that must have been mind-shattering. Just think of it. The disciples are together on Sunday night. They're scared. The doors are locked. And then suddenly Jesus appeared. Wow. Let's read about that. John 20. We're going to read there from verse 19. John 20 from verse 19. On the evening of the first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side, and the disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of anyone, their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Now Thomas, also called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were in the house again and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here, see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, my Lord, and my God. And Jesus told him, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. We tend to forget that the stories of the resurrection is about ordinary people that try to make sense about what is happening in their lives with Jesus resurrection from the dead it's interesting how we are made because there is three basic functions that we are born with or or, or to put it better that develops very soon after birth that makes us distinctly human and and if i look at the story that we read and i think about life there's there's this amazing comparisons with these three the, the first one is that whole urge to survive. The, the instinctive and primitive urge when, a, when, when someone is born, when a baby is born, is that urge to survive. It's, some, it's, it's something that's in the gut. They often say that that's one of the reasons that um, a baby is patted on his backside for it to 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 yell and then to breathe in, to get air in, in their lungs so that they can live. It's that same urge that make a baby look for food almost the moment they, 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 they come out and they're alive. Um, that, that natural urge that all of us have to survive. Um, when, 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 when we get bigger and later in life, um, it, it, it tends to, 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 to come around different, but still, if, if your life is threatened, if things don't work out 
the, the way you expect it and you know that um, if, if, if it's not going to turn around, you don't have a chance to survive, then a lot of things just get less important. And your focus on survival, it's kind of this natural, instinctive human drive each one of us has. That's exactly where we find the disciples on this Sunday evening. Um, the doors are locked. They're scared for their lives. They're scared of the Jews. Scared that the Jews will actually catch them, kill them like they did with Jesus. For them, it was a question of life and death. That's why they hid. That's why they tried to, 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 to be out of the way. I think we don't always understand exactly what the disciples went through with Jesus' death and resurrection. You must remember, this are a, a, a group of people that left everything and followed Jesus. This was a group of people who built their life totally on Jesus. And they had to endure the wrath of the Jews. People who Jesus challenged with the, the way they, they conducted religion, and the way they lived. Um, and and th th this was the dominant culture of the time. And now suddenly Jesus comes and challenges them. And these disciples were on the side of Jesus. So when Jesus were caught and when they killed him, the disciples had to flee for their lives. Because they followed the Messiah, the promised Messiah with a promised kingdom who has been killed. So Jesus' death turned everything around for them. And now they, they heard all the stories of the resurrection and they just don't know what to do with it. So it's understandable that, that, that they have this urge to survive, the urge to, to not to die. First basic thing that we are born with. The second thing, or the second question, or the second uh, development that takes place right after birth is this, this natural urge to make connections, for a baby to reach out to their caregivers, for a baby to grab his parents' fingers or hand or just clutch to it. It's, a, it's one of the amazing things, the security a, a, a babies need for, of the touch of humans, of being, being held close by their, their caregivers, their mums or their dads. Um, it's that it's that emotional bond that develops between a baby and and their parents. Um, we need connection to survive. When this scared group of disciples are hiding away, something happens. Jesus suddenly appears. Verse nineteen says. With the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them. How amazing that must have been. Just think what they must have felt. Jesus is here. <laughs> Maybe they were even more afraid. Uh, Luke 24 that writes about this also says, they, some of them thought it was a ghost. Maybe that's what we would have thought. But it was something that they didn't expect. Something they, they, they couldn't believe. Because Jesus was dead and now he's alive. Now he's standing here right among them. And Jesus' next word changed everything. He said to them, Peace be with you. I have told you many times that in scripture when you read something three times in, in a short uh, in a short passage like this, and the same thing comes around three times, it's kind of important. So listen carefully. Jesus tells them, peace be with you. In Hebrew, it's shalom lecha, which means it's a deeper kind of peace. It's a peace that covers everything in your life, which will give you health, security, peace, which will give you good relationships. It's a prayer that says, I want the best for you. It's almost as if Jesus come and say, listen guys, you'll be okay. I'm alive. Don't be afraid. Don't need to worry anymore. Here I am. Death couldn't keep me. You're not alone. Don't be afraid. You're going to make it. <laughs> 
It's amazing. And as guarantee, he gives them the uh, Holy Spirit. Verse 22, and with that he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. From now on, you will never be alone again. I don't care where you are this morning. You're not alone. The Holy Spirit is with you. I don't care who you are. I don't care what your situations are. The promise of scripture is that you're not alone. You can never be alone again. How amazing is that? But then Jesus do an important thing. And we must, mustn't miss that. He tells his disciples, his disciples the very next thing. If you forgive the sins of anyone, their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Jesus knows how important these healthy relationships. And the challenge is, hey, we've got to keep our relationships healthy. Because we need this connection. We, we, we need good relationships amongst each other. So forgive. You can't have a healthy relationship if you live with grudges, if you, can't for, if you can't forgive, if you can't trust people. You've got to repair relationships and the best way to repair relationships is to forgive. The best way to have healthy relationships is to forgive easily, quickly. The Lord could easily have said, but l l l listen, to repair these relationships and to keep you healthy, let's worship or let's read your Bible or pray. But he said, no, forgive each other. Because in forgiveness, we've got the potential to heal the community, but to heal ourselves as well. So uh, he takes us back to the basic things. He tells us you've got to survive. I'm here with you. You'll never be alone again. So forgive each other. Trust me, you're going to be okay. I give you my peace. And then the third important thing. The third primary function with, uh, that's, that we are made with um, after the urge to survive and the urge to connect is the development of our intellectual brain, the logical, rational, analytical part of who we are. That, that part that thinks, that part that question, that part that looking for meaning, that try to understand. That, that's looking at, at issues logically. That's making, making certain assumptions. Making decisions. That part of the brain is the next that develops. So to ask questions. To look for answers. Is the way we are made. Therefore it's the most natural thing. For Thomas to come and say, but what happened doesn't make sense. I don't understand it. How can it be? It's not logical, possible. I will never believe it before I've seen it. I'm looking for the facts. And if I don't have the facts, I can't believe it. We must remember, Thomas wasn't there the first night. Doesn't, Thomas was on his own. Thomas was afraid on his own, hiding on his own. Thomas wasn't there when Jesus came and told them, you're going to be okay. You're going to survive this. Thomas wasn't there when Jesus repaired the relationships between them. Thomas wasn't there when Jesus told them, I'm giving you the Holy Spirit so that you will never be alone again. So that's why it was more difficult for Thomas to believe the impossible. We need other people to survive. We need other people for our faith to grow. We need other people. We need connection to look at a different way to all these questions we have about life. All these questions we have of our faith. It's part of our DNA. Jesus, go a step further. Jesus, Jesus actually tells them, listen, um, I understand that you are afraid. I understand that you are alone. I understand that you have a lot of questions. But I challenge you to take another step. If we go back to scripture, he says in verse um, 
in verse 21. Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. Um, Jesus actually tells him, listen, I want to give you a new purpose. The purpose is not to have all the answers. The purpose is to go out and make a difference in someone else's life. Because there's people outside, there's people in the world that's also afraid. That's also scared. That's also alone. That also don't know. I'm sending you. Faith functions on, on, on those three levels. Um, faith are always looking for meaning. And, and, and the way as we do it as Christians is, 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 is we read the stories of the Bible. We listen to people's life experiences. So we listen to sermons. We read books. We, we have a special place for, for um, religious symbols and for religious activities in our life to confirm all these faith practices. And Jesus does an interesting thing. Both times, both Sunday evenings when he appears to his disciples, he shows them the signs of his death. Listen, listen to this. Um, verse 26. Uh, so, so, sorry. Uh, verse 20. After he said that, he showed them his hands and his sides. And then again, Thomas comes and says, verse 25, Unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand inside, I will not believe. Then Jesus came and told Thomas, Put your finger here, see my hands, reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Jesus, show them he's hurt. Jesus, show them the signs where they nailed him to the cross, where they, where they, where they put a spear into his side. Why? Because signs of weakness can become signs of strength that will help us to believe. It's interesting. We sometimes think that religion and faith has to do with being powerful and having a lot of strength and never doubt and have everything right in our lives. Jesus says, no, it does not work like that. The worst thing that happened with you in your life. Just think about that. The worst thing that has ever happened to you. Can be turned around to be the strongest. That's what I said last Sunday. Remember? When we talked about the whole idea of with Jesus' resurrection. It was just the beginning. And we're there again. The worst thing. The bad things that happen with you. Not the end of the road. For the Lord. It's only the beginning. The fact that these disciples are alone, that they are afraid, that they, that they fear for their life, that they don't know what their purpose are going to be. Jesus come and tell them, listen, it's a new way. I want to do something new in your lives. Because the bottom line of faith is not only just the urge to survive or just the urge to connect. The bottom line of faith is to take where you are. And to see that the Lord, how the Lord is going to shape that and change that so that you can go out and make a difference with that in the world and in the life of the people you know. To ask questions, to have doubts, to be afraid, to be on your own is not the end of the road. But your faith can't survive if you lock yourself out of these relationships. Your faith can't survive if you stay afraid and don't allow Jesus into your life to give you peace, to give you new purpose. All these questions you have is part of growth, is part of growth in faith. That's how we are made to look for meaning. So don't stop asking the questions. Don't stop wondering why and how. But remember, the closer we are to Jesus, the closer our connection is with other, peop other people that believe, with the faith community, the easier we will understand what the Lord wants to do in our lives and the lives of people around us.
Someone says all those prerequisites. Come to the Lord and say, I will only believe if I see, if I touch. What if the Lord will come and answer all your prerequisites? Give you everything that you doubt about? What then? What if the Lord comes this morning and tell it, it to your face? Peace be with you. Don't be afraid. Trust me. Forgive. Take my spirit and know that I'm with you. Come, put your hand in my side, your fingers in my hands. What if the Lord does this this morning to you? Will you believe? Will you keep on believing? Because that's the message of the resurrection. Even our doubts, Jesus can use to strengthen our faith. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for people around us. That we don't need to be on our own. That we don't need to, to live a life alone. Separated from people. And even in this time when we are forced to do it, thank you that we can still connect with each other in this way. Thank you that even if we are afraid of our life and our own survival, that you are there. That you want to give us peace. That you give yourself that the Holy Spirit is with us always, just as you promised. Thank you that you forgive us and that we can forgive other people. Thank you that you want us to have healthy relationships because you understand the value of that for our own spiritual growth. Therefore, I want to pray for the church this morning. That you will keep on working in each one of us. Bind us together, Lord. Keep us together, Lord. You know what questions we have and you know what doubts we have. And you know what's the things in life and in faith that we wonder about that makes it difficult for us to believe. Thank you that we may bring that to you and that you will answer us. And you will give us peace, Lord Jesus. We pray this in your holy name. Amen. We have opportunity to bring our offerings. Um, you see all the information down below. Um, let's praise the Lord with what we give Him. We have a lot of birthdays this week coming up. Nicola Brewer and Vanessa Krotz on the 11th. Uh, girls, may it be a special day for each one of you. Uh, Barry de Yacha, the 12th. Barry, we know you guys have been through deep deep waters uh, throughout this year may the next year be amazing um, happy birthday cornelia de villiers the 13th franc Rue the 14th helen shimmer high the 14th and zeban his birthday is on the 15th may it be a special day for each one of you then in may in the month of may we're going to have an, 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 an sermon series about david the story of David, the story about this ordinary, ordinary shepherd boy who saw how an extraordinary Lord works in his life. Um, Dare to believe, the name of the series. So follow it, uh, follow it with the rest of us. It will be, um, it promised to be life changing. I, I can assure you that. Monday's matter tomorrow night, t 8 o'clock for all the men. Uh, you've got the information below. Just log in. Um, on our website so um, you've got it there I want to to bless you this morning with the Hebrew word Shalom Lecha may the peace of the Lord be with you may you experience his love and his care and his blessing and all that is good in the name of Jesus Christ our Saviour Amen I believe.